African drums are talking. Dense walls of verdure with slinking cat-like forms that appear and disappear into incessant shadow. Trees, monarchs of the forest with sinewy vines twining closer and closer. Their ever-reaching tentacles slowly draining the life from that which gives it life. This is the jungle where life preys on life and death never sleeps. This is Africa. Professor Anton Edwards and his little party have entered the village of the leopard men. They are mystified by a beautiful girl who can apparently change herself into a leopard at will. This girl tells them they were expected and that huts have been prepared for them. Under the influence of the girl's great yellow eyes, Jack's mind becomes slightly deranged and he faints. They place him on a bed in the hut, and while the professor is dressing a wound in the witch doctor's arm, Jack fully recovers. The native girl, who is called Ifabe, daughter of the moon, warns the party not to kill leopards as they might be the men folk of the village. As the professor accompanies Lorna to her hut, they see a leopard sitting in the moonlight watching them. It has a curious resemblance to the native girl. Suddenly it starts moving toward them, and Jack in the hut hears Lorna scream. What is it, sir? What's wrong? Oh, that leopard jacket. It jumped and, and it clawed my arm. Well, let's go in the hut and see if there's any damage done. Where was it? It was sitting right in front of my hut as, as if it were waiting for me. And then it jumped. I didn't have time to get a gun out or I'd have shot it. The thing disappeared like a shadow. It was the woman, Jack. I'm positive. Those great yellow eyes and the look on his face. Is there any hot water left in that vessel, Jack? I'll see. Yes, sir. It's about half full. Well, rinse that cup out and fill it. Here. Sit under the lamp here, Lola. Let me look at your arm. Eh, it doesn't seem to be much wrong. <laughs> Did it touch you higher up? No, just the forearm. It seemed to put its two claws around my arm tightly and, and then let go. Mm. No blood drawn. Just a few indentations as if something had pressed it tightly. <laughs> Better wash it, though. Oh, thanks, Jack. Nothing serious, sir. Oh, thank goodness. Get your boots on, Jack. You ought to know better than to walk around here without them. Well, I guess you're right. I didn't stop to put them on just now. Father, do you remember when Jack was looking at the moon from the cave mouth? And he was gripping my arm. Uh-huh, uh-huh. You said his hand felt like... Just like an animal's claw. And that leopard held my arm in the same place. And it felt exactly as it did then. Oh, purely coincidence, my dear. There was nothing here to worry about. No skin broken. Put on a little iodine, that's all. Well, that's a relief. Must have given you a big scare, though. It certainly did. Those great yellow eyes staring into mine and coming right at me. By the way, where's Ngoro? Well, that's what I'd like to know. The girl said he was out in the forest talking with the devil that shone when he spoke to it. Oh, and Guru has funny ideas at times. Although, whatever he says or does has a meaning. I've learned that those devils of his can be very proficient. You remember his big spear? The snake woman? Hmm. Well, whenever he was worried about anything, he'd go into the forest at night, stick the spear into the ground, point upwards, and wait for something to happen. And did it? Well, I've been out with him several times when he did that, and personally, I'd swear nothing did happen. But afterwards, he'd make the most amazing predictions. Did they come true? Well, somehow it always worked out the way he said it would. He says the old woman who gave him the spear tells him what to do and warns him of danger. I knew he was out there with his spearhead when he probably said he was talking to a devil that shines when he speaks. I think if Fabi is just a little bit afraid of him. Thank goodness somebody can scare her. She has an inscrutable cat-like expression that gives me the creeps. Yes, yeah, she's a very strong-willed girl. I'm afraid she's learned the art of hypnotism. When Guru stared it down when we were over there by the fire, and she didn't like it. White man, I heard your woman scream. Is she afraid of the leopard that sits watching in the light of the moon? Ifavi, daughter of the moon, is it the custom of the country that a native walks unbidden into the hut of a white man? I am not of these people. My skin is as yours. I speak your tongue. Nevertheless, you will wait until bidden in the future. Yes, master. Mm. Is the ceremony of the village finished? Yes, it is finished. And there is nothing to keep you from your sleep. My daughter is well. And the young man who was sick. The fever has left me, Bobby. I'm well again. It is the way of the fever. If you have need of anything in the night, I shall hear your call. Can you beat that? 
She came in like a cat. Must have heard what we were saying. Those eyes of hers give me the creeps. Weren't you a little sharp with her, Father? After all, she's the one who's responsible for us having a roof over our heads. We haven't thanked her yet. Yeah, you mustn't thank a native, my dear, until you're ready to depart. They mistake kindness for weakness. Anyhow, what I said to Ifabi just now was merely an attempt to bluff her down. She evidently has things her own way here. Well, she did back down and call you master. Yes, I'm afraid that was only on the surface. We're going to have trouble with that young lady. I can't figure out why she was so ready to take us in here. She's bound to have known we wouldn't stand for any native familiarity. Did you notice her eyes when she looked at Jack? Even in these dim lights, they were yellow fire. Yes. I'm afraid, Jack, you've made an unwelcome conquest. You'll have to be careful because, if I'm not mistaken, if Abby has several admirers among the warriors. Good heavens, sir. I've done nothing. In fact, I'm afraid of the woman. Mm -hmm. I'm a little frightened of her, too. There seems to be some menacing thing hidden behind her that might spring out to at you at any minute. Well, don't think of it. Here comes Nguru. Where you been, you old rascal? We thought the leopards had you. No, Chewy, Buana. Nguru have I too quick one time. Chewy, no catch him. Nguru, palava, foe, snake woman. Yes, yeah, so the leopard woman told me. Huh. She which see too many times. Yes, you're quite right. That woman does see too much. Well, Lona, I think you ought to turn in. Oh, Father, I want to hear what Nguru... Uh, that is, what... Uh... What his spirit told him? Yes. Well, don't you think it might be some private matter that... Well, uh... uh, snake woman talk plenty. She say, Moon Kichawi, Haluko friend for Buana, for let us sign. Mm. Guru says the Witch of the Moon is trying to make friends with us because she needs our help. What kind of help in Guru? Safari Tafuta, plenty male. Mm -hmm. She wants to go after a lot of money. Aye, Buana. Chimbo for male. Hmm. Some sort of buried treasure, eh? I knew there was something behind her hospitality. What does it mean, Father? He says if Fabi wants us to help her go after some treasure that's evidently hidden in the ground. Well, time will tell. Do we go after the treasure, Father? Where is it, Nguru? I want to know. I think it's about time you had a complete rest, young lady. Now, come on. Off to bed with you. Jack will take you to your hut. Just when it's becoming interesting. Well, I guess I am tired. Good night, Father. Good night, Nguru. For our sleep, Missy. Good night, dear. Oh, uh, keep your guns handy, Jack. I will, sir. Anything you want, Lorna, just call out. We'll hear you. All right. Goro, you think you could track a leopard that was outside this hut half an hour ago? Uh-huh. Chewy woman? Yes. At least I'm sure it was the same leopard we saw jump out of the fire. Now, no, Buona. Look. Chewy. Leopard tracks. You're in the hut. Hmm. Where did I get a light on it? Why, George, you're right. That's where the girly Fabio was standing just now. Hmm. Well, this beats me. The woman walks in here and leaves leopard tracks. What's down there, sir? Leopard tracks. If Fabio left them. Great Scott, but how could she? Well, it's some trick she uses. Probably did it purposely for our benefit. You feel up to going after the leopard that attacked Lorna, Jack? Right now? Sure. Get your rifle in. Let's start on Guru. See anything? Aye, Buana. Come. Come on, Jack. Right with you. Hey, what's the idea of going after this one, sir? I'm fairly sure it was the one that jumped out of the fire tonight. It's smaller than the average leopard. Well, it's headed straight out of the village, apparently. Just what do you expect to find, sir? I haven't the least idea. It's just a hunch. Huh. Well, if the trail goes off into that long grass, we might as well give it up. Nay, hey, Buona, come. I don't know how he can see anything in this stuff. Neither do I. But Nguru knows what he's doing. It looks as if he's heading for that clearing we saw as we came in. The one with the fetish poles in the middle? Mm. Yes, there it is, right ahead. Buona, now on. Chewy on hut. By George, yes. A leopard. You see it, Jack? Sitting on the roof of that hut. I can see its eyes. Yeah, I've got it. Looks like a shadow. But what's a hut doing on the edge of the clearing? Probably an initiation hut. Where they isolate young warriors. Come on. I want to get a good look at that beast. Better be careful as we approach it. Buana. She chewy woman. Yeah, well, leopard woman or not, if the thing starts to spring, I'm going to shoot. 
Watching us intently, sir. Have your rifle ready. Make sure the safety catch is off. It's still watching, sir. If we have to shoot, what do we tell the natives? Just say the beast sprang at us. They evidently know this particular leopard as the one that probably changes herself into when she feels like it. Somehow, I'd like to prove to the village that the cat and the girl are two separate beings. Well, it's language isn't very ladylike, anyhow. Be careful now. The beast might spring at any moment. And Goro, take this flashlight, and when I tell you, switch it right on the leopard. Uh-huh. I'll keep it covered if it springs. You stand by in case I miss Jack. If it doesn't come at us as the light goes on it, I don't think there'll be any need to shoot. Ready? Put your on. Look out, sir. She's coming. Where's the light? And girl, where's the light? Oh, devil, devil, knock him from the hand, Buona. Ah. Listen. Listen to that groaning, sir. It's a woman. Confound it. Where's that light? Uh-huh. Here, Buona, here. Uh, great heavens. It is the woman. She's rolling from the roof. Quick, Jack. Catch her. I've got her. Uh, Let me see. Put her down. What, man? You have broken the law. Yet it was written in the moon. 